So shall we see here one of the statement that is every third is an irrational number but every irrational number need not be a third. So what about this one here already we know that irrational number means uh, it we cannot write in the form of p by q as well as uh, pi is also one of the irrational number and e is also one of the irrational number. So what about that thirds all irrational numbers are thirds no. But here all thirds are each and every third is an irrational number. For example, root 2 is there. Okay, root 2 is an irrational number as well as root 2 is a third. Okay, and root 3. Root 3 is also in the form of nth root of a. So here root 3 is as well as that is an irrational number. As well as we can say that root 3 is a third also. And cube root of 5. That is also a third as well as that is an irrational number. But here which number, which irrational numbers are not thirds? Here pi is there. Pi is an irrational number. Generally we know that pi is an irrational. Pi is an irrational number but not a third. Why? Because, because pi we cannot write in the form of p by q that's why we can say that pi is an irrational number and in the same way pi is not in the form of nth root of a that's why we are saying that pi is not a third and here root 2 is an irrational as well as that is a third so we can say that which numbers are we are calling as thirds those all numbers we can take it as irrational numbers but every irrational number need not be a third which one are the examples means here we can say that pi and e is also e is also an irrational number but that is not an not a third So after that types of thirds, types of thirds again we have the two classifications one is that number of terms and another one is based on order. So here next thing is types of thirds, types of thirds classification again is based on two things one is based on order another one is based on number of terms. So first we will discuss about that based on order. So order means already you know that nth root of a and through in nth root of a n becomes that n is representing that order so here first one is quadratic third what about that quadratic third here n means here n is equals to 2 in nth root a n is equals to 2 then we will call that third as a quadratic third just for example root 2 root 3 root 5 root 7 and so on here already i told that here n is equals to 2 no n is equals to order 2 so if the order of the third is 2 we will call that thirds as a quadratic thirds next one is cubic thirds Okay, here cubic thirds means in nth root of a, here n is equals to 3. So, if that third order is 3, then we will call that those thirds are cubic thirds. So, cube root of 5, cube root of 7 and so on. So, this type of thirds are known as cubic thirds. So, after that quadratic third, after that cubic third, we have that one more third that is biquadratic third. In biquadratic third, here in nth root of a, n is equals to 4. Okay, if the order of the third is 4, then we will call that third as a biquadratic third. We can say that fourth root of 5, fourth root of 20, 
and so on just observe these two examples here n is equals to 4 and here also n is equals to 4 so here the order of the third is 4 so we will call this type of thirds are biquadratic thirds so here we discuss the three types of thirds those three also depends on that based on order so if that n is equals to 2 which means order is 2 then we will call that one as quadratic third if the order is 3, then we will call that one as a cubic third. If the order is a 4, then we will call that one as a biquadratic third. So these three types are there based on that order. So next we are going to discuss about that. The types of thirds are based on that number of terms. So, the next thing is types of thirds based on number of terms. So, number of terms is here. The first one is monomial third. First one is monomial third. After that monomial third, we have that pure third. Okay. After that pure third, we have that mixed third. After that mixed third, we have that compound third. After that compound third, we have here binomial. And final one is trinomial third. So these all are the types of thirds. So first one is monomial third. So what about that monomial third? In a third, if it consists of a single term, it consists of a single third, we will call that one as monomial third. Just example. Root 2 is there. Root 2 means here in this side we have that only one number that is root 2. We have that only one term right. So that's why we will call this one as monomial third. Some other examples cube root of 1 by 3. Okay. And here fifth root of 4 and so on. These all are single terms only no. So single terms here there in that is third. So we will call that third as monomial thirds. So next one is pure third. So what about that pure third? So what is the definition of a pure third? If the third is in the form of a into nth root of b. If a third is in the form of a into nth root b. Then here a is equals to 1. Here a is equals to 1, then we will call that third as a pure third. Okay, just one example. Here root 2 is there. Root 2 is in the form of a into root 2. So here a is equals to 1. Yes or no? Here this is in the form of a into root 2, but here a is equals to 1. This is in the form of a into nth root of b only. But here a is equals to 1 and this is an square root of 2. Here n means n is equals to 2 and here b is equals to 2. Okay, so this type of thirds are called as pure thirds. Here only one thing pure thirds means that should be in the form of a into nth root of b but here a is equals to 1 then we will call that one as pure third. What is the another name of a pure third? That is entire third. Okay. Another name of pure third is entire third. After that, we have mixed third. So, mixed third means what? Just observe that pure third means that third is in the form of a into nth root of b. But here a is equals to 1 we are saying. If a is not equals to 1, then we will call that thirds are mixed thirds. Here, 3 into square root of 4 
Just observe that this is also in the form of a into nth root of b. But here a is equals to 3. So here, what is the definition of a mixed third? Here a third which is in the form of a into nth root of b. But here a should not be equals to, should not equals to 1. Okay, which means a is equals to, we can take that any other number than 1. Okay, if that is a is equals to 1, then we will call that one as a pure third. If a is not equals to 1, a is equals to some other number is there, then that type of thirds we can take under mixed thirds. So, after that mixed third, we have that compound third. So, what about that compound third? Till now, we discussed about that a single terms. If a third is consisting of only one term, then we will call that one as a monomial. If that in the form of a into nth root of b, then here a is equals to 1, we will call that one as pure third or entire third. And here, next thing what is that? Mixed third. If a into nth root of b, if a is not equals to 1, we will call that one as mixed third. But what about that compound third? Here onwards, we need to take the combination of thirds. Here we have to use that the fundamental operations, addition and subtraction. So, what is the definition of a compound third? Means here the sum or difference of the sum or difference of one rational number two or more thirds one or two or to our more thirds that combination by using the sum or difference those thirds we will call as compound thirds so here that is in the form of a plus or minus b nth root of some c okay so here we have that a rational number as well as we have here third is also there which means that is an irrational number or else 2 plus 3 into sum 2 Okay, here in this third we have that two terms, two terms also there by using that addition. In some cases we can write like this also no root 3. So here in this total form we have here 2 plus 3 root 2 and minus 3. So here we have that three terms. So the sum So here the sum or difference of one of the rational number and one or two or more thirds okay that is known as compound third. After that compound third we have that binomial third. So just before we discuss about the compound side now, so in compound side we have that two or more terms there. So a third, a compound side which is consisting of two terms, a compound side which is consisting of two terms, we will call those thirds are binomial thirds, which means that third should be consisting of two terms, two plus root three. Okay, here we have that this is a compound third and in this third we have that two terms, 2 and here root 3. Two terms there, no, that's why we will call this type of thirds are binomial thirds. Next one is trinomial third. So here a compound third which is consisting of three terms. So here a compound third which is consisting of three terms then we will call that one as a trinomial third. Here one of the example 3 plus root 2 plus or minus some root 3. So here in this third we have that three terms so we will call this type of thirds are trinomial thirds. So once again if that third is consisting of only one term that is monomial third. If that third is consisting of two terms we will call that one as the binomial third and here if the compound third is consisting of three terms. Okay, then we will call that one as a trinomial third. So these all are the types of thirds based on that number of terms.
so next thing is similar sorts or like sorts or uh, next one is dissimilar sorts or unlike sorts so what about the dissimilar sorts or like sorts here the ratio of two sorts the ratio of two sorts is rational Here for that similar sets, the ratio of that two sets should be a rational number. Then we will call those two sets are like sets or similar sets. Just take that one of the example. 2 root 3 is root 3. Here we have that two sets. One is 2 root 3, another one is 3 and square root 3. So here the ratio, ratio means we need to take that the quotient of that these two. We need to take its division. So 2 root 3 whole by 3 root 3. And we know that in numerator and denominator we have that same term. Common term is there means we can cancel those two terms right. So here what is that quotient? So that is 2 by 3. Is there any irrational number? Nothing is there. So here just we have that only 2 by 3. That is the rational number no? So if we have that rational number after we are taking that ratio. Okay. Then we will call those thirds are like thirds. And simply we can say that their radicand part, their radicands are same. Okay, just observe that here a is equals to 2, here a is equals to 3. But here what is that radical part? That is square root of 3 and here square root of 3. So those two also having that same irrational part. So if the thirds are having that same irrational part, then we will call that thirds are similar thirds or like thirds. What about the dissimilar thirds? Here the ratio of two thirds, the ratio of two thirds is not irrational okay the ratio of two thirds is not irrational then that is uh, those two are dissimilar thirds or uh, unlike thirds just one example 2 into square root of 2 and here 3 into square root of 3 okay so just observe that 2 root 2 whole by 3 root 3. Is there any common things? Irrational number. Here no common things there right. That's why here no cancellations also possible. Here for example here 4 is there then we can cancel these two. But here irrational part we don't have that any same part. Okay, that's why here this type of search we will call it as dissimilar search or unlike search or else another way also we can say the search which do not have which do not have same irrational part then we can say that those search are similar search or unlike search if we have that same irrational part we will call that one as similar search if that search are not having that same irrational part then we will call that search are dissimilar search or unlike search.